this guy invited me to do a challenge. I think uh, you pronounce his name Toma, but I could be wrong. Um, but he has this repo called Angular Challenges, and it's a fun repo with a bunch of different challenges. And the one that he wanted me to do is uh, ArxJS and Signal Interoperability. And this is actually what motivated me to figure out this whole thing. This is why I created this whole ArxJS versus Signal series over the past couple weeks. Uh, because the the challenge was to figure out uh, how to make this app in like a, a way that I think is good for for interoperability between signals and RxJS. And I've been really unsatisfied with what I had been saying, like don't use signals in a service. Don't do that. I I love signals. <laughs> I love the the efficient derived state and I love how you don't have to have combined latest and de and define the dependency array basically up front and then use a function and map it. You can just refer to the signals directly when you're writing computed. So when I was coming up with this pattern, uh, this, this app, this challenge was really instrumental in getting me to really be motivated to do that. And I, cause I'd kind of written it off, just, just, you know, use state adapter or something, but I, I'm glad, I'm glad I did this because this is, this is a fun example. It's not too complicated. It's just basically a type ahead app. Um, so yeah, so type ahead search filter, it's got pagination. And, uh, if you click fast enough, it cancels requests. Um, and then you can click on one, which is good. Why, why isn't it clicking? That's kind of weird. Oh, I killed the server, that's why. All right, we should be back. Yes, we're back. Okay, yeah, so uh, you can click on one and then go back. So it's cool because it has a point where it's destroying this this component, and that's great because it can demonstrate the all the qualities that auto signal, the auto signal pattern demonstrates. That that's what that's what I was hoping for was a nice demo of that. And yeah, as you see, it uh, refreshes everything. So let's compare the code from before. So the first thing I'll zoom in later, but for now, uh, I'm just going to show you real quick. I created the utility functions that I explained in the last video. So that's what I first did. And in the component, it's mostly m deleted code. Just like I explained in the last video, just set up and tear down stuff is not needed with auto signal pattern because it uses ArcGIS to do that stuff automatically. And the service where the shared signal is, isn't that interesting. Like the, well, it's interesting, but the diff isn't interesting because you can't really see anything. It's just totally different. Uh, there, there were, yeah, I, so this is almost completely declarative. I've highlighted it by, uh, the state it's controlling or the variable that's being defined. So up top you have blue, that's just injecting a service. Then you have state. That's the primary signal and you have uh, yellow, that is computed, and then orange is RxJS. It's uh, events, side effects, and events. So each one of these basically maps from an event to another event. And then they're all merged down at the bottom, and it's green again because it's it's the connection we're defining that defines changes that are going to be put into this main signal. There's something interesting about this that's a little peculiar for this project, but it's not that strange. Um, this is saved in local storage. So if we look at this function here, um, basically it just takes stuff from local storage and returns the parsed version. And the reason I am merging it into this connection observable is because we need to have this run every time a new subscription happens. Because if the state gets set up again, we need to look at local storage and get that because it could have been changed since this service was constructed. This very initial state that the signal was started with is is just is is only called once and that will be there forever, the initial state of the signal. Um so and, and that's what we'll get reset to as well every time the every time the state gets reset so <laughs> every time a component unsubscribes well all components unsubscribe so 
uh, yeah, what we want is something that runs every time to get the latest copy from local storage. Okay, and then related to that is this side effect here. The results that come back, the list of photos, photo URLs, whatever it is, um, they, I, I need to set a tap here to set local storage. And I could do an effect, like a signal effect, like a do two signal on, on this and and set it there. Uh, but what I definitely can't do is do an effect on the main state um, because because that in the end it gets it gets reset back to this original initial state each time and I don't want the effect to put down local storage. So basically as soon as we get the results, we want those fresh results to set in local storage. It's not the results, it's the configuration that like the parameters used to get the results. So yeah, so that's just an interesting thing about this one. All right, so let's look a little more in detail. I like the overall data flow of this. I like it a lot. It's, uh, you have the service up at the top and then you have the signal and then derive state. So basically everything flows from top to bottom. These will run immediately if something's asking for them. And so, so this happens, then these happen, and then all this is the asynchronous stuff. All this is the side effect async stuff, and then it all comes down and merges into a single stream of new states, and that gets connected to the top level states. So it's like one big loop, but it mostly just flows down. So that's pretty cool. And one nice thing about that is we can use these computeds while we are managing the side effects. So for instance here, what we're doing is, well, I'll just, let's just explain this. So usually it starts with an event and then uh, some side effects happen and then a new state occurs. This one, for this, the triggering event is this last event here because this changes the search and page. And what this does is it uses a computed. So here I actually defined it here because this computed is not going to be used anywhere else. It's, it's specific to this. But these here, these computeds are used or were, were used elsewhere. So um, it made sense to define them up there. Um, and the cool thing about this is if you did a combined list with RxJS, this is creating a new reference every time. Uh, so, I mean, it would be annoying to do like distinct until changed on that. Um, but basically this, this will only run. So if both of these change at the same time, like with here, it still only returns once. So this is efficient. It's just, it's just efficient. You don't have to worry about it. It's really cool. So I convert that to an observable, and that's going to be the payload that's sent uh, to the API. And then when it returns, we already looked at this, we set local storage, uh, we catch error, return the error. And then if there's the error, we return one state. If, it, if there's no error, we turn the other state. And I call each of these observables uh, something change. It's basically a state change. That's what I'm calling it. So they all end in a new state and uh, and then they get merged into a single stream of new states and then they get connected. All right. One thing to notice is that state changes are not pure functions. This right here, we've got something interesting that changed but we're accessing signals right here. So this is really nice. We can do this with signals but uh, some people prefer pure functions and if you really, really care about that, uh, maybe there's a way we can make a utility where you define a set of state change functions. Um, it's basically basically like a state adapter, but you know, honestly, I, I would just I would just use state adapt if you're if you really want to get uh, like all those nice clean best practices. Uh, this is still like ninety percent awesome, but anyway, so that's just one thing to notice. One other thing to notice is that there are no methods here. All the state changes are defined as starting as subjects. So these are the initial events. So when they click the next page button in the component, uh, it's just firing that event. And then it merges into a new state change. And then that gets merged over here. Or, yeah. So I like this better because then if you have one event that you need to cause have caused two state changes in two different services, you can actually just share that subject in a shared service that gets injected into the two separate services and then react to it in each of them independently. 
You don't need to call two separate methods in a callback function. So you get a more reactive data flow where every change in the template just pushes a single event to some top level subject and then everything flows down from there. And if you have a pure side effect that you don't want to listen to at all, you can just do it like this. You can have a tap, do the side effect. And then if it doesn't cause a state change, you can just map to and call this dot state and then merge it in and it will get subscribed to at the right times. So it's going to have the side effect that you want, uh, but you don't have to write a callback function anywhere. So everything, the still, the data flow is still uh, going straight to the top from the template and then flowing down from there. So yeah, I think that's it. Um, yeah, and overall, uh, I, I looked at git stat and it went from, it, I, uh, it had 139 additions and 141 deletions. And so I was like, okay, cool. But then I realized that actually includes these things. So uh, these utilities that you only needed to find once. So the code itself was something like 25 lines shorter. So that's pretty cool. Wasn't it, like, it's not necessary. I would prefer this even if it were a little longer, but uh, I just like how it ends up being succinct because ArcGIS takes care of, like, I think a lot of it was from the component that all we have to do is use it and it, it's automatically handled everything we'd want, resetting and refetching and all that stuff. So yeah, if you, uh, you want a reminder on why that's awesome, uh, watch the last video again, but um, this, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. I think next I should do a harder example, something a little more uh, advanced, maybe something that involves a couple services, but I'm, I'm really, really happy with this so far. So yeah, um, yeah, let me know what you think. Thanks.